Hello everyone and welcome to a relatively, relatively small video in preview of the Game of the Year Awards. Since, as per tradition, I won't be able to, to participate on them because they will be busy and they will be held in what my, time, my country considers basically night time. So as a result, rather than having to, to have the guys mention you know, what he did voted all the time, like last year and the other, the other years. I'll just have Skim very quickly through this web, through the website and tell you what the category are, what the candidates are and what I did vote, you know, before having us also some minor prediction of what the trailers uh, that they show might be because, because, uh, you know, Jeff has hyped that they're going to be like 30, 40 more premieres or something. <laughs> All right, without further ado, let's begin with the first category, which is the most important of them, the actual game of the year. Which apparently is the this one, one given last, technically. Apparently this was leaked last year, in a, a couple of days ago, supposedly, and I will tell you in a second what was it, but the candidates are as follows. Deathloop, developed by Arcane Studios and published by Bethesda. It Takes Two, developed by Hazelight Studios and published by EA. Metroid Dread, developed by Mercury Steam and published by Nintendo. Psychonauts 2, developed by Double Fine and published by Xbox, Xbox Game Studios. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, developed by Insomnia Games and published by Sony. And Resident Evil Village, developed internally and published by Capcom. I admit, all of them are pretty good contenders. However, I did vote for uh, ultimately for Metroid Dread because I do believe it's the one that works the best uh, among this category. I Death actually Loop... voted for Metroid Dread as well, and I gotta say, Mercury Steam have come quite a ways from being just that small-time dev that were doing the new Castlevania game on the block to now being contenders Ju for Game of the Year as they have revitalized the Metroid franchise in class. Just to be quick, Deathloop did not really tell me anything, even if I did enjoy the other games that uh, Arcane Studios did, like Dishonored. It takes two, it's a good game, but not Game of the Year material, I'm no, sorry. It, it, look, as we covered in our commentary, that game still has issues. I would have voted for Psychonauts 2 maybe if I played it yet, but I haven't, so I can't judge it I have properly. seen enough of it to say that, yeah, it's a good contender, but it's just fine enough. It's, and while the gameplay is, you know, um, plenty enough, especially compared to the first Psychonauts, you know, I think Metroid Dread still has that extra advantage. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is pretty much the same. It's a good game on its own, mm -hmm. but as a continuation of the franchise, it's just all right to me. Um, I still prefer a crack in time when it comes to the rest of the franchise, uh, and uh, we'll have to discuss more when we actually tackle those games since I'm also actually in the middle of recording that. So if I understand correctly, your stance is essentially Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is great, but it's sort of great in the sense that it's a good game that's essentially no, the first ma game in a while. Material. Like, mm -hmm. And you know what? I do get some of the hype behind it, but I do wonder if there would have been as much hype if, you know, we hadn't gone this long without a new Ratchet and Clank game. Basically. Not counting the 2016 reimagining, which, yeah, not a lot of people were too hot with. And, uh, come, and, Resident Evil, and Resident Evil Village is fine, but uh, again, the, compared to the, previous, the other choices, I still prefer Metroid Dead over that. Uh, what did you want at that, Joe? Metroid Dread. Because right, that's the yeah. only game I played. <laughs> you know what? Good, Fair. good Fair choice. Enough. I mean, I, I feel like this. I feel like while all these games are good, Metroid Dread is probably the closest to feeling like a flawless experience out still, of this. Still, I argue it's a better selection than, than compared to, say, the last one of last year or even the year before. The year, the 2019 Game Awards, everyone thought that Death Stranding was going to win because of Joe Keighley's bias. And thank God Sekiro seemed to have at least, at the very least, you know, got some, some love okay, from okay. that. If but, I can get uh, 2019 me... credit, 2019 was like the opposite of 2020. Like, everybody thought Death Stranding was going to suddenly win all the awards, like Red Dead Redemption 2 had rightfully done so in 2018. But no, thankfully that was not the case. It's also interesting to note is that three of these games are platformers. Mm-hmm. Well, 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 if you want to count Dread, because... You, you have know. to remember, that Dread, not a lot of games actually were released this year when it comes to, you know, new proper right. games. Or for will, obvious reasons. I will agree with Deads, though, that, you know, it is nice, very nice that, well, you know, that platformers are finally getting to be, you know, recognized more so. 
But anyway, just so quickly before going to the next category, the game that supposedly has been leaked to be in it with the winner preemptively is Russia Tank Tank Rift Apart. We'll have to see if that turns out to be the case. Um, I honestly don't know, and I don't care about that. Again, I did my vote. We'll see how that uh, how that is influenced or not. But again, take your your usual grain of salt. The next category is the best game direction awarded, as you mentioned, for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. For this one, the candidates are Deathloop, It Takes Two, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet and Clank Grief Apart, but different enough is Returnal, developed by Housemark and published by Sony. For this one, I voted Psychonauts 2. Oh, me too! Of, mind you, mind you, I will say this, all of these games are a very good contender. Returnal has the, the alien location, the HR Geiger-esque nature. Ratchet and Grief Apart has the whole dimension hopping, that you know, transition instantly. Death to Web is the whole a 70s aesthetic, and it takes two, takes advantage of the fairy tale-esque scenario, you know, to showcase different locales in different ways. But I do believe Psychonauts 2 has the, advan the very advantage of using the the landscape of the mind to create uh, such a different environments, uh, you know, that uh, those, those take uh, take an extra step over the others. Also, what about you, Dan? I feel like it's going to be a Ratchet and Clank because I know this is the common thing that the series has gotten since it's jumped to the PS3. Oh, let me guess. It looks like a Pixar movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, yep. I, I hate as, as a fan mm. of the series. I hate that comparison. It's literally the it's the Dark Souls of genre X kind of like, like it makes you really that. feel like Spider Man. I will I, say, it, it, it does it such a disservice. Okay, okay, okay. I will say this though, based off of best game direction, did you guys also factor in you know how components like the story were, or did you just go strictly off of the description of vision and innovation in the game? Direction no, no, just just that because later on I think there's going to be a category title the story. Fair enough, yeah. I went with Psychonauts 2 because, while well, I haven't gotten to play it. I have gotten good looks at it, and it does definitely feel like the most out there, but innovative, and in a way works kind of game of the bunch. Again, I, can just... tell the, I can tell that the delays were actually fruitful, and Team Schaefer actually did not squander the Kickstarter money this time around. Thank goodness. So, he yeah. <laughs> you, you, the only reason why that game turned out the way it does is because... Microsoft bought them, so they it's because he said on record they would have cut out a lot of stuff. Anyway, next category: best narrative for outstanding storytelling and narrative development in the game. The candidates are Death Loop, It Takes Two, Psychonauts Two, and different entries are Life is Strange: True Colors, developed by Deck Nine and Square Enix, and Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, developed by Eidos Montreal and published by Square Enix. It's really good. I, in, in fact, my vote for this one goes to Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh my the god, mine too as the, well, the, again. The actual sleeper hit. Don't get me wrong, Psychonauts 2 um, has a good story as well. And that loop is fine for what it wants to tell. It's actually more simpler, but it takes two at its issues, as we mm. mentioned in the. Mm. And, and Life is Strange Through Colors, it's more entertaining than something that you can take seriously. I watch, forgot uh, that game came out this year, honestly. Watch uh, any Let's Play that does of a game, and nine times out of ten, you'll see the, the person who plays it doing some kind of joke uh, when it comes to the, to the actual story. Unfortunately, sadly, it's, uh, it's causing contrast because as a series, it wants to be taken seriously. Usually, but alas, uh, we'll eventually cover these games as so we'll do see now. But Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, I can tell you this uh, for a fact, not only there's a good story on its own, but despite the initial premise that is, oh, they're trying to cash in on the success of, um, of the MCU movies, I can tell you this, uh, as the story progresses, it's much more rooted in the comic book lore, showcasing characters and locations that the movies never even never ever tackled, and thus offering a complete new experience. And it does showcase what the trailers promised. A good team mechanic and the relationship that Star Lord has with the other components of the band. So again, I do, I do believe that he did the best job out of all of them. It definitely, yeah. I mean, it had somewhat rough beginnings with the first time we saw it, but no, it definitely did flourish. Again, like, you know, and yeah, it's definitely a game that I am looking forward to. Again, haven't gotten to play it, but I have gotten to see enough of the story to get that. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. For me, it was a really tough call between Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy or Psychonauts 2, but no, in the end, I chose Guardians of the Galaxy. 
Uh, I, I, honestly, I haven't played any of these games. Like, I don't know the well, tell, t- tell us your like an inch or something. Like, what, well, what does your heart tell? Me because you know the Game Awards likes to be treated like the Oscars. They're probably going to give it to Life is Strange. I seriously hope not. No, just, um, no look, look, that's the thing. Even the original Life is Strange, while it was popular, it still got clowned on for the problem. Yeah, but you know, it's like this emotion story that made me cry and okay. whatnot. So, so okay. that, again, that's just the cynical side of me. To anyway. give them credit, Dead, even the Game Awards don't fall for the Oscar bait stuff that easy with stuff like David Cage. Oh, but <laughs> they did with, uh, with last year. Oh, you know. God, yeah. they did. But anyway, moving, moving on, on, because otherwise we'll not ever get through this. The best art direction. The candidates are, in this case, Deathloop, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and uh, different ones are Kina, Bridge of Spirits, developed by himself, published by Ember Lab, and The Artful Escape, developed by Beethoven and Dinosaurs, and published by Annapurna. What um, is this is a bit, Once again, this, this, I'm sorry. This is a bit tough, because it strictly talks about the art direction, not the, the category we saw two categories ago, but just how the graphic looks and what art style they chose for it, you know. God and damn, this is... I thought Stu got nominated for a lot of things this year. Honestly, this mm-hmm. was, again, another tough pick for me between Psychonauts 2, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, or The Artful Escape. I did vote instead for Kina, Bridge of Spirits. It has a bit of rough around the edges, like some of the pre-rendered cutscenes. Um, definitely looks different from the in-game, you know, actual cutscenes. You can tell they're a bit more rendered. But um, for being a fan of the first game from a team that did just a mock-up of A Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask kind of video a couple of years ago, it's still really impressive what they came out with, that level of graphical fidelity. So uh, I think that needs to be rewarded. But I have to say that all the other contenders did have a good chance to me. For the one I ultimately picked, I went with The Artful Escape because it really does look like a pretty gorgeous game. And given how, well, you know, they do emphasize the art in it, they they thankfully did not slouch on that. What about all you, right. Dedge? Yeah, what about you, Dedge? Mm-hmm. What you... Which one did you Honestly, I want Psychonauts to, to win something. <laughs> Because I already said Ratchet and Clank would probably win Best Direction. But, no. Hmm. So it's either going to be a tie between Kina, Psychonauts, or Ratchet and Clank. All right. Next Next category. Best score and music for literally the score music. The candidates are Deathloop, um, composed by Tom Salta. Marvel's Guns of the Galaxy, composed by Richard Jux. Ah, that's why it sounded familiar. Um, the Artful Escape, composed by Johnny Galvatron and Josh Abrams. Um, Cyberpunk 2077, composed oh. by Marcin Prisbilovic, Piotr T. Adamsic, Paul Leonard Mo- and Paul Leonard Morgan. Or the Replicant version 1.22, composed by Keiichi Okabe. Yeah, you, you don't even need to. If you know me enough, you know already that I blindly voted for the Replicant because BS. <laughs> uh, and to be fair to Cyberpunk 2077, there the are so many things wrong fine. with them. The score was not one of them. So I thought I, had, I, thought I only had licensed music. No, it yeah, has I the it, it, it has the composer which has the standard cyberpunk music that you can think of the you know the the lo-fi the the futuristic vibe that you would hear for something like Blade Runner you know or also like Miami. Um, Artful soon... Escape has also the advantage of being music themed, but again, I'm sorry, it's, it's it's just there's no comparison for me. I'm sorry. Yeah, I kind of went with Near Replicant too because I'm the most familiar with that soundtrack. And... and I know that it's with the, the new versions have been divisive. Uh, some some people actually do prefer the originals. I do get it. I don't believe a dual soundtrack would have helped for this case, but apparently Square could not implement it. So alas. But I do be- believe it's uh, higher than all the other candidates. What about you, Dej? Well, I haven't listened to any of them, but I'm going to give it to Square Enix with Near Replicant because it's Square and they always make good music. That's the thing. Technically, That's... Square Enix is on there twice. Yeah. Guilty yeah. Gear got robbed. Next. That is, that is true as well. Guilty oh. Gear also had a good soundtrack. Um, Next up, best, best audio best, design. 
But yeah, in this, t- this case, not the, the score, but the actual sound effects and voice implementation. The candidates are Deathloop, Ratchet and Rift Apart, Resident Evil Village, Returnal, and Forza Horizon 5, developed by Playground Games and published by Xbox Game Studios. For this one, I did vote for Returnal. Um, yeah. Because if you actually have Lee played or at least saw how it, uh, how it plays, the sound design for Returnal is very unique in that they had to use the particular sound effect to simulate the guns and the actual effects of the creatures that they do both in how they do sounds and how, and how the projectiles and different air attacks do sound to create this alien kind of feeling. Ratchet and Rift Apart is basically serviceable for Horizon 5 as well for a car simulator. Um, Death loop also fine, not not really that any outstanding. And Resident Evil Village, you can argue it has <laughs> some interesting sound effect for the creatures as well, but again, not enough to compete with stuff like that. Eternal, sorry. I actually did choose Resident Evil Village. Uh, like, I do feel like it does integrate the sound well, cause well, it's Resident Evil. You gotta make the sounds nice, atmospheric, and immersive. Otherwise, the scares half the time will not work. So yeah, I went with Resident Evil Village. Like, again, I have issues with that game. The audio design, definitely not one of them. What about you, Dej? I'm gonna give it to Returnal, because the one thing I've heard is the SSD and the... Uh, and put that for the, uh, what, what, what's that thing with the PS5's controller? The, yeah, the vibration oh, function. Yeah. The dual sense. So. Yeah. yeah, dual sense. So I think that's why it's gonna win. I'll admit, as somebody who actually bought a PS5 controller to use with my PC, it is pretty good. I then admit... again, that's just stri- strictly audio design, not like how does it sure, make you yeah. feel with the controller. I, yeah. I, w- I will say this about the PS5 controller. I do get now what you mean about the PS4 controller feeling too small now that I've held a PS5 controller to you. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, shall we? Ne- Next, uh, best performance. Uh, we have uh, here five actors as usual. We have uh, Erika Mori as Alex Chen in Life is Strange True Colors, Giancarlo Esposito as Anton Cal- Castillo for Far Cry 6, Jason Kelly as Colt Van as De- in Death Loop, Oziova Akaga as Juliana Blake from Death Loop, starting to see a BS here, and Maggie Robertson as Lady Dimitrescu from Legend Evil Village. A.K.A. Ah. what most people consider to be the main character of that video game at this point. Who is yeah. all, who's barely in that game to begin with. Okay, I know, but, but I still had to see him, so I voted her. Okay, 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 okay. That's the ironic thing, Dad. I get the feeling that Resident Evil 8 is gonna be about a square slapping themselves in the forehead, realizing that they could have built up Capcom. more potential Capcom, slapping themselves in annoyance with themselves thinking you know what we could have built up on this character Demetrescu and this character Heisenberg more because they turned out to be the most popular ones and ironically don't go horny also that's the thing Jova you say that but the part- the particular house of the, um, the the girl with the dolls is actually argued by many to be one of the highlights of the game so well, that as well. well well sure yeah that's the highlight I'm talking specifically the characters so like well no, but but whatever the okay, point, look, the point long is... story short Resident Evil 8 is definitely a good game but it feels like a lot of bouts where they could have built off more on stuff that they did there. For me, this was another tough pick between two of the actors, but I'll let Tio go first. No, like I said, they voted Maggie Robertson. Although I, <laughs> I get this, this, this suspicion that the Game Awards are a bit BS, so we're going to choose either someone, one of the two from, from Deathloop, or Jarkar Esposito, because you'll be some money. I'll admit... Uh, are the Deathloop vo- voice actors, like, actual celebrities? I actually don't have checked. I they, they're fine for what they want to do for the game. Perfectly serviceable. I don't think they have any, you know, disadvantage over the other competitors. Well, if they want to go for the money, then they'd probably go for the guy from Far Cry Five. He's a great Six, actor. Uh, Gus from Breaking Bad. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. anyway, though, for me, it's a tough pick between Maggie Robertson. And Jason Kelly. Jason Kelly did right. a fantastic voice, and he has a very cool name, I'll admit. What about you, Jova? Sorry, what about you, Dad? I'm gonna give it to Esposito, because, again, the, the, the cynical side of me of the Game Awards. Because it'll be, it'll be, it's messed up that, like, the person I'll win is an actual actor, while everyone else seems to be voice actors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
All right. And next. I just went with Maggie Robertson for my vote. All right. Next category is kind of a doozy. Games for impact for a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or message. And these selection. Okay, this is one of the selections I'm kind of a bit... I like, am. I have some experience. We saw these, but let me tell you, the candidates are Life is Strange: True Colors. Uh, then we have Before Your Eyes, uh, developed by Goodbye War Games and published by Skybound. Boyfriend Dungeon, developed and still published by Kid Fox Games. Chicory, a colorful tale, uh, developed by Greg Lombon, Alex Dean Jones, Lena Rain, Madeline Berger, and Shelley the Pipt, and published by Fingy. And No Longer Home, developed by Humble, Ga- Humble Grove, Anna Lee, Sal Davidson, Ad- Adrienne Lombardo, Eileen Ransberry, and published by Fellow Traveler. Okay, I'm just going to say this. I went with Boyfriend Dungeon because that seems like the most interesting of the bunch, but man, like, this has got to be one of the most, huh, who that, except, of course, for Life is Strange group. Most of these no, are indies as well. one game. I'm going to choose, and that's only because Shiroi has been talking about it a lot on Twitter. No longer home, I guess. No, Chirigori, a colorful time. Oh, that's the yeah. one I voted, actually. Oh. Yeah, because I, cause that, I know she's been talking about it a lot, and it's like, oh, this looks cute, so that's... it might oh. win that. So you voted for that, that one, Dedge? Yeah. So, but yeah, I do wonder if this... I wonder if this is, like, practically a set match for Life is Strange to win. I still voted for Boyfriend Dungeon, but... I don't know, I mean... Maybe... No, I, I, I don't know what Before Your Eyes is, so I could not actually surmise that. The, this was one of the one of the ones I did not know much. Like, again, anyway, it feels almost like a knockout round for Life is Strange because of that. Oh well. Anyway, next one, Best Ongoing. I mean, as the title says, a game that is going. We have Call of Duty Warzone, developed uh. by Infinity War, the Raven Studios, and published by Activision. <laughs> Genshin Impact, developed and published by Mio. Mm-hmm. Apex Legend, developed by Respawn and published by EA. Fortnite, developed by published by Epic Games. And Final Fantasy XIV, developed and published by Square Enix. As someone who's actually subscribed to the critically acclaimed RPG, MMORPG, I voted for Final Fantasy XIV. And Besides, Endwalker, at the time of this recording, Endwalker has just released. Exactly. You know, besides, I would... I, besides, I don't want any of the others to win. Maybe Apex Legends, maybe, but not certainly not Fortnite, COD, or Genshin Impact. I'm sorry. I would have voted for Genshin Impact if it wasn't for that big controversy that happened earlier this year with a <laughs> kind of stiff the fans badly for an anniversary. Like, look, I'm not even uh... a fan of Genshin Impact, and even I heard about that. It's like... Jova, Jova, I know, I know a couple of people in my country who are fans of the game, and they themselves said that no, for this category, we're not going to vote that. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, uh, let me put it like this. This is one of those categories with the good guy needs to win so the bad guys can learn a lesson in humility. That being said, Call Who's of Duty... Who's the good guy? That, no one. Fa- exactly. Okay, Final Fantasy fourteen is the least bad guy. That being said, Call of Duty, what the hell are you doing here? You've been nothing but an embarrassment that everyone has rightfully dunked on. And even, even have- the oh, don't worry. Even- well, well, I'll get to that later when we go to uh, trailer projection. Even the so. guy, even the icon as the guy looking very confused, like, wait, wait, what? What am I? Why am I here for? For reference <laughs> like- sake, folks, Call of Duty, the, re- the latest Call of Duty game is one of the least selling things of Activision, so much that they actually took notice of something. Let me repeat that. Call of Duty, the third-person shooter juggernaut, has finally suffered enough of a dent that Activision have finally taken notice. Fortunately, it's apparently the f- still the fourth best-selling game of the year. Well, no. That d- is not surprising. It's kind of like saying that FIFA can take a dent, but it will still be the best-selling. But what what did you vote in that, I'm gonna vote for Genshin Impact just to see the salt. More, more oh, like oh. More, more like my fist will have a Genshin Impact on your monitor. Uh, also, you know, because a lot of people I know, controversy aside, really like that game. Well, it's a, it, yeah, it, has it's a, just, it has a cute art style and lore, but that's the best I can uh, give to it. Oh, okay, do you give Genshin Impact credit? It it is arguably one of the best free to play games you can get in the sense that it. It, it, it's close to feeling like an actual proper game. And from what I've heard, you it never feels like you have to pay to win or even progress properly. It's just that... No, it has, it, it has its still its BS moments, Jova, like any FTP. 
But anyway, let, let's move on then. Yeah. Um, indie game for outstanding creative and technical achievement. Oh boy, game outside the like Shouldn't say all right, all right. Let, let me read them. <clears throat> Number one, twelve minutes by no. Luis Antonio and Etna P- Annapurna. Hey, that's that game where Willem Dafoe goes crazy. I hear. It's more like the it's it's very unique. I'll tell you in a second. Then we had Dev Store, developed by Acid Nerve and developed, published by Devolver Digital. Inscription, developed by Daniel Mooling Games and published by Devolver Digital. Um, Kina Bridge of Spirits, as we mentioned before, and Loop Hero, developed by Four Quarters and published by the Devolver. I'm just gonna um, say it wasn't even a contest for me. I voted Kina Bridge of Spirits. That was it. I yep. voted the inscription actually. Um, I've been a fan of Daniel Mullin stuff, particularly Pony Island. I even in a small recording run of this on this channel before. Um, but if you can watch Markiplier's run on the game that he's doing right now, it's a very good card game, card game, video game with a twist on it. It's kind of like uh, um, Hand of Fate mixed a bit with a horror game. That it goes very meta. That being said. That 12 minutes is this is the only no, nomination I, that 12 game minutes better and not win. And it's Holy shit. Oh, no. I, don't, okay. I don't know enough about Loop Hero and that story is fine, but again, not not a Okay. Seriously, twelve minutes. I've heard so much talk about supposedly a controversy, but Pedro's wanted to keep me fresh, but I have to wonder, is it that bad that it tanks the game that bad for you, Didge? Uh, okay, without sport, should, 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 should I give him a hint, or just let, let it's him It's more explain? titled what the twist at the end is, it, that, that is mean... dependent on that, that's all you need to know. Anyway, Anyways. that's pretty much it, what, what remind, me, remind us again, what did you vote at that? Uh, Kina. Okay, then. Anyway, next category is best mobile game, we have uh, Genshin Impact, Fantasia, developed and published by Mistwalker. League of Legends Wild Rift, development and published by Riot Games. Marvel Future Revolution, development and published by NetMarble. Yeah. And Pokemon Unite, developed and published by TV Studio Group, and uh, sorry, and published by the Pokemon Company. All of these, uh, let me just say this, all of these are not really great, also presented by Verizon, by the way. <laughs> but I voted for Fantasia, the, the game developed by Renoko Sagaguchi Studios, um, which is, looks cool, but it's an Apple Arcade exclusive for the time being, so not many people know about it, and all the other entries are kind of not on par. I know that Genshin Impact is probably going to win, but i just not really in the mood for voting that. What shame, about you, Jova? It's a shame Fake Grand Order isn't on here. Now that's a non-predatory mobile game that actually knows. Hey, we can be free to play and not try to drain every one of their money. I'm gonna pretend I haven't heard that. <laughs> Let's not veer too much off topic. Out of these, what do you vote? Pokemon Unite. From what I've what heard, it that, seems Joe? to be the most uh, promising and most intuitive. What about Your you, Honor, that? Pokemon Unite. Death. <laughs> so you agree, me. All right, then. Next category, best community support, as in recognizing game for outstanding community support, transparency, and responsiveness, inclusive of social media activity and games update patches. We have uh, for, uh, for uh, candidates Destiny 2, developed by, hey, by Angie, Bungie, Apex Legends, Final Fantasy XIV Online, Fortnite, and No Man's Sky, developed and published by Hello Games. I picked No um, Man's Sky. Because, well, I mean, look. No Man's I- Sky is a bit. I mean, this guy is a bit too easy because he he has won kind of this category for like, what, two years in a row now? Well, I mean, there is kind of a good reason. Like, the story of No Man's Sky at this point is legendary, part and thanks to internet historian making it very popular, but, like, I mean, you have to admit, No Man's Sky did go above and beyond. That being said, I do agree that while it is the deserved winner... Maybe we can give it a rest with putting it on here because it's kind of like the obvious winner at this point. Like that being said, it's the only other winner that I will vote over what he did is in Family 14 online because nothing against Destiny, but it it, it hasn't done much in recent times in terms of updating or being having transparency and responsiveness as we call. And like I already mentioned enough about Apex Legends and Fortnite. What about you, Dad? I'm gonna say Final Fantasy XIV because how open Yoshi P was to apologize about Endwalker's delay. 
Mm-hmm. And, he was, and he seemed really upset about that. Also, earlier this year, the, he had he had there was that conference, and he mentioned that uh, one of the composers was fighting cancer. Yeah, so, so I was like, yeah, you, on, you cannot beat that. Like the, everyone put their heart and soul into making that game the best they could, do, especially during. Keep COVID. in mind, it's that they're beating hard on Square Enix right now. Basically, that's what they're giving even them most of the money. So yeah. Um, anyway, next category it's innovation in accessibility presented by Chevrolet. Uh, is in recognizing software and or hardware that's pushing the medium forward by the features, technology, and content to help games to be played and enjoyed by an even wider audience. This is the category that Chevrolet probably would care about the most. Yeah. Uh, as for our candidates, we have Far Cry C, Far Cry 6, developed by Ubisoft Toronto, developed by Ubisoft, Forza Horizon 5. Marvel's Guardian of the Galaxy, Ratchet and Rift Apart, and The Veil Shadow of the Crown, developed by Creative Byte Studios and published by Falling Squirrels. I don't know anything about this last contender, but as far as I know, I have to admit, just like last year, that Sony has been steadily improving with the actual accessibility, as in showcasing what kind of customization of the HUD you want to have, and also your subtitles, what kind of degree you have. So I have to vote Ratchet and Clank Rift apart for this one. I did the same as well. Yeah. I mean, the, most of the others, as far as I know, also Far Cry 6 and Marvel Guys of the Galaxy also had improvements, rather than being, you know, just the, the, the basic. But I know that Sony has, pulled, has pushed just a bit more for the sake of it. And to be fair, that's good enough for me. Anyway, next, best VR slash AR. Um, we have the VR version of Hitman 3, developed by IO Entertainment. I Expect You to Die 2, developed by Shell Games. Lone Echo 2, developed by Ready at Dawn and published by Oculus Studios. Resident Evil 4, developed by Armature Studios and published by Capcom. And Sniper Elite mm-hmm. VR, developed by Krotskin, or just at Water, and published by Rebellion. You know, how funny mm. would it be if the VR Resident Evil 4 is technically the Resident Evil 4 remake we were supposed to get? It's just that they didn't clarify with Probably the not. experience. Anyway, out of this, I don't know anything about Expected to Die 2 and Lone Echo 2, so I did strictly what it for, for this game that I don't already hit. Van 3 is a good game, Resident Evil 4 as well, and Separate is always a good time. But for a VR proper experience, I voted for Sniper Elite VR because it's all about you know actually taking game properly, which for a first-person case of the VR works much better than this. What about you, Java? I voted for Hitman Free because it does feel relatively immersive, apparently. You can almost feel what the light you, choking from their eyes. Uh, I don't care. All right, then. It's Fair VR. enough. Yeah, you know what? It's VR. Moving on. Okay, next one. Best action game. We have uh, um, Deathloop, Far Cry 6, Returnal, Back for Blood, developed by Turtle Rock and published by WB Games, and Chivalry 2, developed by Tor Banner in Studios and developed by and published by Tripwire Interactive. Wasn't Chivalry these... 2 like a sequel to that uh, game from Ubisoft of all things? No. No, 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 for honor, no, not at all. Oh, the original Chivalry was actually published by Activision in some places, but it was just a matter of finding a publisher of their own. This one, as you can see, has gone kind of fully indie. Um, Chivalry is basically sword fight, sword fight, medieval sword fighting simulator, basically. Um, it's good, but honestly, out of these, I voted for Eternal. I think it works for the best out of all of these. I voted for Death what about Loop. You? Very what about you, Death? Deathloop. Yeah, I mean, and Death Loop went something. Yeah, Your Honor, Deathloop, Deathloop. <laughs> hey, and you know what? You know, Deathloop is actually pretty good in how it um, and how it integrates its action into stuff here and there. I appreciate that. All right, next category. Best action adventure. Uh, we have Marvel Gun of the Galaxy, Moetry Dread, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and Resident Evil Village. Much like with Game of the Years, I voted for Metroid Dread out of this one. Same. Um, aside from Resident Evil Village, all the others have are good contenders, if you ask me. But Metroid Dread, again, is just that extra spark, and Metroid Steam loves, uh, knows how to do a proper action game without having to have too many, you know, sacrificing by having too many, you know, uh, 
cutscenes, uh, like elements. Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy tends to have a lot of uncharted esque moments where, oh, look at this character doing an action rather than you know, actually playing it. Uh, that's more masked as a gameplay. Um, but again, all the other three are good contenders. Resident Evil Village is kind of the odd way man out here. It's fine on its own, but not enough to be qualified for this one, if you ask me. Yeah. Um, next category. Best role-playing um, role Best role-playing. We have... Um, we have all titles that we haven't covered yet. We have Cyberpunk 2077, <laughs> Monster Hunter Rise, Monster Rise, developed and published by Capcom, Scarlet Nexus, developed and published by Bandai Namco, Tales of Arise, played Developed probably by Cap by Van and Anko and Shimming I mean, say five developed by Antlus and probably by Sega. Gee, this I is essentially which one picked. This is the basically the bean the of the the, the garbage bean of the, the game of wars because it's basically like a gladiatorial, you know, pit we are like throwing the air and say maybe one of you will actually come out on top of okay, this. Okay, okay, okay. I think we should cover why is t- Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven here? I guess to be fair, it does apparently uh, even has... on Launch Java on PC it actually did work though, as Hold intended. On. And it's, I guess it's just to... the cost of launcher was disastrous. Honestly, from what I've heard, the game itself did still have loads of problems, but from what I've heard, it did have pristine customization. The, when the game works as intended, as he, uh, you know, as uh, you know, C Project Red did intended, it's actually pretty fine as the RPG, first version RPG they wanted. It, the problem is that the optimization literally cut away three quarters of the intended target base. And even with the PC um, version apparently working the best, it still has issues, and you needed like an insanely good PC to run it. What, okay, let me, what let, me, let me just put it like this. When your game is delisted on PSN, you fucked up. Yeah, I, again, not... again. But, Considering that Sony okay Life of Black Tiger, yeah, you done screwed up if they, <laughs> they actually But delisted. regardless, I didn't even vote for it. I voted for Shin Megami Tensei 5, but I had to be honest, I would have gladly voted for Stuff like Scarlet Nexus or Tales of Rise if they'd been present in other categories, which, again, are perfectly serviceable to be put in other places, but no, they're just relegated in, in one occasion, just here, just maybe because you know, Jeff actually had a, go- a good moment, maybe. So, anyway, next up is Best about, Fighting Game. Actually, Joel, you didn't tell me what you voted. And I said what I voted for. Okay, well, what I no. voted for was Scarlet Nexus. What about you, Dedge? <laughs> You know, I only own two of these games that I haven't won. But you know what? I just want, I just want this series to actually be popular. Megami Tensei. Five. What's the other? Oh no, I, I own, I own Monster Hunter Rise and Scarlet. Oh, okay. Wait. So All you, right. So to you, you voted for Shin Megami Tensei Five, yeah, too, so. right? <laughs> Next one, best fighting. Allow me. <laughs> Allow me. First is Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yabe, the Hinokami Yaiba. Chronicles, Chronicles, basically based off of the Demon Slayer anime hit series. Then there's Guilty Gear Strive, Arc System Works' is the latest endeavor. Then there's Melty Blood, type Lumina, uh, basically the fighting game of the Nasuverse. It has both yeah. Type Moon and Fate personnel in it, so... Yeah, and people were mad when uh, a fake character got in. <laughs> I wasn't. But anyway, anyway. Then there is <clears throat> Virtual Fighter Five Ultimate Showdown, the latest from Sega. And then there is the ever triumphant supposed Smash Killer that was totally oh going God, to put Smash no Ultimate out of business. We're, everybody we're declared this. it is Nickelodeon All Star Brawl. The game that may or may oh, not have its lunch taken by multiverses later on. So, what did you want to do, Andrew? I pretty good, I can guess already, but go on. Melty blood type. Not guilty gear strive, seriously? Oh, I, look, well, there's something about type Luna that looks more appealing to me. Like visually, strive looks amazing, and I do want to get it. But I feel like. Because Melty Blood has been a meme in the FGC for years, so it's like this is its time to shine. Bah. Guilty I... Gear, I wish it was nominated for best ge- art direction. Art direction. Yeah. Oh god, that 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 probably would have won it ten times over. Like, 
Come on. Arc yeah. system works just have this sorcery to somehow make everything so much as pixel arc look amazingly animated and gorgeous. Uh, um, can I ask instead what the fuck is Virtua Fighter 5 doing here? Uh, uh, because it's a re It's basically no, I, a re I know, what, I know what it is, but why is it, is it candidated here? Remasters are fair game. It's basically a new... It's, th th this is the same award that awarded Street Fighter V Championship Edition Ugh, or whatever for re-release of it over Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. When, anyway, when it comes to RPGs and fighting games, this award category is a joke. So Don't get me wrong. The, 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 the Guilty Gear Strive. Um, the, Demon, the Demon Slayer fighting game looks fine, and because it's taking advantage of the anime's different art style compared to the manga, it has some added effect, but that's pretty much it. Um, what about you, Jova? Okay. I'm not a bandwagoner, so I didn't go for Nickelodeon All-Star Ball just because it was becoming popular. That being said, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl does have some merits to it. But nah, I gotta go with Melty Blood Type Lumina. Love the gameplay. And, you know, um, it's got Saber in it. Like, nah. Ah. Hey, uh, uh Jeff, my uh, birthday's uh, this month, so, uh, here. Uh, here. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> before we, we spent, we already spent enough time. Anyway, Best Next. Family... Not even best family game, just best family. Best <laughs> and Nintendo have, uh, plus it takes two. Yeah, the, yeah, we have it takes two. Okay, then we have Mario Party Superstar, developed by No Cube and by Nintendo. New Fun Pokemon for the Snap. family to help you get along together. Well, in some Mario New Party. Pokemon Snap, developed by Bandai Namco and the Pokemon Gunplay published by Nintendo. Super Mario Pretty War Bowser Fury, developed by Nintendo, and Mario World Game Together, developed by Intelligent System and published by Nintendo. I vote. I voted for Pokemon Snap because I believe it's the more balanced out of all of them, and ideally the one for the whole family, you know, as intended. But let me just ask, what is It Takes Two doing here? Like, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good game for well, families. Well, and no, it's no, not, no, 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 it's no, no, not for families, Judge. It's really not the game for the family. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, and not only that, but It Takes Two, that's made for two players. Hardly a family endeavor, really. And really, a family game. The game that has it gruesome... It talks about divorce and has, a, and has a very, you know, story that wants to be taken seriously. Not to mention a literal gruesome murder. Yes, they replaced the blood with stuffing, but still... Still, you know, <laughs> come on, we all know what was going on there. And there's literally swearing all around, like, no, what is it takes two doing here? And can What did you want to draw? It was a tough pick between Mario Party Superstars, Pokemon Snap, and Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. But screw it, I went with Bowser's Fury plus Super Mario 3D World. You see, I, I, I'd almost go with Bowser's Fury, but it's like it's attached to a re-release, and I feel like that's not fair. Well, technically, Super Mario Party Superstars is kind of that, but in space. Well, that, well that's just a, that's a remake, like Gen Sonic Generations. Fair enough, but hey, I gotta say, do you think Mario Party Superstars helps families or breaks them apart more? What do you think? You, this is also you. why I went for Pokemon Snap because it's actually for properly for the family, especially for you know little kids. <laughs> I mean, come on, my okay. Guy. So going off the ones I I played, you know, I'll just be a maverick and say WarioWare, get it together. I mean, that's a <laughs> that game actually too. is really good. That's a little, the, the 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 entire picture has literally Mark Wario having his pants ripping at his junk. <laughs> yeah, and. A family on, picture, uh, indeed. Best simulation slash strategy. We have uh, Age of Empires, Empires. 4, developed develop by Relic Entertainment, published by Xbox Game Studios. Evil Genius 2, World of Animation, developed and published by Revalion. Humankind, developed by Ampli2 Studios and published by Sega. Inscription, developed by Inscription and Adventure before, and Microsoft Flight Simulator. Developed by Yozobo Studios and published by Xbox Game Studios. For me, it's a tough pick between Age of Empires, Evil Genius, and Microsoft Flight Simulator. I ultimately have to go with Flight Simulator because uh, I haven't seen much of Age of Empires 4, sadly, because it, it, it sure as hell not something that's compatible with my toaster for PC, so it's going to be a very long time. Inscription, like I mentioned, it's a good game, but for strategy simulation, not really fitting. 
Ari. I ultimately went with no. Flight Simulator because I haven't gotten to check out Evil Genius 2 enough, even though that one did have a pretty interesting concept. I'll go with a... Uh, Basically, it's a Diagon game you should, everyone would think I should make. Um, anyway, next uh, category... Uh, yeah, I'll just go with Flight Simulator. But next, next is... It's racing sports game. racing. This is one that I know basically nothing about. We have Force Horizon, um, F121, 2021, the way Code Master and published by EA, FIFA 22, <laughs> by EA Vancouver and published by EA Sports, Hot Wheels Unleashed, developed and published by Milestone, and Riders Republic, developed by Ubisoft and published by Ubisoft. Yeah, this one I was easy for-, for me. Forza Horizon 5 for me because everyone else, I either I didn't knew or I just did not care. I actually went with Hot Wheels Unleashed. That's a pretty dang good racing game and it has some interesting mechanics and physics because, well, yeah, of course, you're driving a Hot Wheels car, but you're literally driving the equivalent of what it was like if you attached rockets to a toy Hot Wheels car. And it does have some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, for, I grant I haven't played any of these, but the ones that interest me the most is Forza Horizon 5. It's like, I've never heard about Forza, but this one just feels more appealing. Oh, mm-hmm. is it about the different environments? Yeah, different environments, and it's just, I don't know, just something that looks relaxing. Alright, uh, next category, best multiplayer. We have actually six uh, nominations here instead of five. We have Back for Blood, uh, it takes two. Monster Hunter Rise. Um, then we have Knockout City, developed by Velan and published by EA. New World, developed and published by Amazon Games. It's an MMO in case you don't know. And Valheim, developed by Iron Gate Studios and published by Coffee Stain. Um, this one was a bit tough, but it voted for Monster Hunter Rise ultimately. I know that it takes two is good for the multiplayer, but it is to a poor. But it's just for you know the local, you know, two player playing the entire a single play what's well, really a single player experience. When it comes to multiplayer, I'm thinking of something that's either you know an MMO or it has an actual multiplayer component. Like Back for Blood is a, a spiritual successor to Left 4 Dead, so it works like that. Same for Monster Hunter Rise, you know, as Knockout City as well. New World is MMO, so it fits as well. Technically, even if I don't like the game. I don't know anything about Valheim, so I did not count it. Uh, what I, about you, Jova? I voted for Monster Hunter Rise as well. I was originally going to do It Takes Two, but yeah, when you get down to it, It Takes Two, while it is an amazing multiplayer experience, I feel like it only gets down, you know, the basic two player co op thing, whereas Monster Hunter Rise has, like, all the. Ca- it has all the categories of multiplayer pretty much covered in. Does it pretty well. What about you, Dej? Uh, you know what? I'll just give it to the underdog this year. It take and not no knockout city. All right then. Well, everyone really tells good. me, yeah, it's actually really good. The trailers did not give a good impression on us, I have to admit. Um, Next we'll, up we'll is see. best content, content creator of the year. Wait, so we're starting basically, to just... the last category. So basically, with people that we don't really know about. Do so. not vote for Dream. Do not vote for Dream. Who? Is- is this person? Don't worry about it. Fuck him. I, I I won't say anything. Just just he's a piece of garbage. Man, I'll and just... he's also on Minecraft too. Anyway, I I'll randomly just... voted for. I randomly voted in Kitty's case the Candice Web Dream. Uh, who fuzzly goes uh, he by and the one I voted for, for Greg F G. Oh, that's the one uh, I voted for I've... too. Well, he's actually Gref G, but yeah, that's who I voted for. I vote for Eba. Uh... Because, uh, do you, do you know that meme of the guy writing on a board and trying to explain something to you really fast? Okay. So I That's know. him. Huh. Cute. Alright, next up is Best Debut Indie Game. We have The Artful Escape, The Forgotten City, Kina Done by Modern Storyteller in Development Power by Dear Villagers, Kina, uh, Valheim, and Sable. Sable. by Shredworks and Power by Raw Fury. Um, I'm gonna go... This was a bit tough for me because I wanted to either choose the Artful Escape or Kina. I ultimately went for with Kina because considering all circumstances, but it's something that I had to decide. I chose the Artful Escape. What about you, then? All right, then. Next uh, category. Most anticipated game presented by Promise on Prime Gaming. We have uh, Elden Ring. Which is what you chose for. Let's God, not get it. Got by Frost and Pavel and Mayanko. God of War Ragnarok. Got by 
develop uh, Santa Monica and Pipe by Sony. Horizon Forbidden West, developed by Guerrilla Games and Pipe by Sony. Um, Breath of the Wild, uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild 2, basically, developed by Nintendo. And Starfield, <sighs> developed by Bethesda, and published by Bethesda. One of, I voted yes for Elden Ring because I'm BS like that. But to be fair, I'm a bit interested at least in God of War Ragnarok and a bit in Horizon Forbidden West. What about you, um, Jova? I voted for the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, so Breath of the Wild 2. It looks very interesting. And again, like, well, who knows what we're doing now with this new resurrect again and or for possibly demise. That said, why the hell is a Bethesda game here, especially after well, the well, last game? We, 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 we have to remember no gameplay of it. You also have to remember, this is the made, first major internally developed IP from Bethesda in a very long time. That being said, okay, look, I'm not going to say that there isn't some people excited for it, but to say most anticipated... I feel like there were more deserving games that are being anticipated. Like how I'd argue Bayonetta 3 is more anticipation than Starfield at this point. But I'm just see it doesn't look triple A enough. So. Yeah, that's 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 basically it. Like these you have to realize these are all mainstream stuff, whereas Bayonetta is niche. I, I say that completely for aware that Bayonetta 2 was nominated for Game of the Year back in 2014. And it should have won. It lost to uh, Dragon Age Inquisition. And, yeah. and hell, and hell, and hell. Bayonetta was arguably the counterpart to Metroid Prime and that was... Okay, you can call that niche all you want. The hype was there for Metroid Prime 4. And hell, the, it was... I, I, I... Yeah. This is just me, but I'd rather see gameplay for something to get excited for. Yeah, I know, which is what really frustrates me about Starfield being nominated. Like, I'd argue yes. for all these other ones, we've at least seen gameplay. We've at least seen enough that we can get a good idea here. Starfield just feels like a buzz pick, and especially a big buzz pick after, again, Fallout 76. I shouldn't even have to say it, but come on. I'm pretty sure most people know better than to give them the absolute go-ahead. I'll buy this immediate after that travesty. What, what you about you, Dan? Uh, you know what? I'll just say God of War, Ragnarok. That looks fun. Cool, all so right, we all pick enough. something different for that one. Next up, brought to you by Grubhub. Best esports, esports game. Uh... There's Call of Duty, brought to you by Activision. Counter-Strike Global Offensive, brought to you by Valve. There's Dota 2, also Valve, League of Legends from Riot Games, yeah, sure. and, and Valorant, also by Riot Games. Okay. Wow, I don't care about any of this stuff. Much like I do for all the, all the years when it comes to esports, I go for the classic CSGO, because that one is just you know safe enough compared to all of these other entries. Um, but that's pretty much it from me. What about you, Jova? Um, which one did you pick again? CSGO, Counter-Strike Global Offensive. It's yeah. uh, one of the oldest uh, online shooters uh, ever made, uh, and it's still rocking to this very day. I went with Dota 2. Yeah, I'm going with Dota 2. I, I, I know, I, I don't know. It, it feels like the least offensive. <laughs> All right, next. Next, next category, eSport athletes. I don't know any one of these people, um, so I just, went, I just went through randomly and, and picked this guy called Head Showmaker Sue. I went with, Tenz, I went with Tyson Tenz NGO because he seems like he has a good amount of red in his outfit and he uh, looks like a wise enough figure, I guess. What about you, Dej? Skip the... God, you know what? I, I'll go with collapse. I don't know why. I I, I know. I know. You know, it's a shame that I say uh, I don't care about esports. Considering I kind of want the edge of, which is uh, part of our nature. Yeah, but I feel like considering that we that uh, we play multiplayer games, we should care about some about this for some to some degree. I don't Let me put it some, like this. But, but, Let me put it like this. Sorry, Yes, there's some, but we should not have to feel compelled about it to the point where, again, some companies are 
really trying to make us care for it. Special mention goes to Capcom literally spending a good portion of their E3 on, on eSports without even really so much as an announcement for the game. If it makes you feel better, for the Street Fighter V demo for Luke, they barely talked about eSports because they understood the criticism. Like, okay, let me put I mean, like this. Esports are something of a necessary, you know, not even an evil. I do get the hype and merit behind them. It's just that they can feel very intrusive with how much they think that, you know, gamers who show up for stuff like E3 really care about esports. Not saying there aren't some that do, but there's a reason we all groaned when they wasted time on a mobile game tournament during the EA E3 of 2018 conference. Anyway, next. speaking of esports, uh, next category is best the esports team. Again, even for this, I went through by random chance. Uh, we have the Atlanta Phase playing COD, the DWG Kia playing League of Legends, Natus Vincere playing CSGO, Sent the Sentinels playing Valorant, and Team Spirit playing Dota 2. I went with Natus Vincere just pick one because fuck Phase Clan, fuck Phase Clan with a passion. <laughs> I went with the Sentinels. I like their because color. red. I like their color schemes, but also they look like a genuine Free Musketeers band of sorts. And hey, might as well throw Valor into bone there. What about you, Dad? Team Spirit, because look, because look at them, they look so happy. And they wear them. <laughs> so pretty much, we can all agree to avoid the Atlanta facing, because COD. Yeah, Face Clan. <laughs> Anyway, next, uh, we're almost at the end. The best esport coach. Uh, I have no fucking idea with this one. Uh, so, you know what? You can skip this if you want. No, 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 no. We came as far. Might as well. A vote is, imp a vote is important, Dad. So, anyway, I voted for this guy called Irat Silent Gaziev. It looks fine enough. For me, and besides, um, of all the others, uh, I recognize the the coach for the face clan, so I skip that. But uh, of all these, I just took with uh, with what I, fe I felt uh, was the best one. I went with Kim Keikoma Jong Jun, because you know, okay. a guy in a suit is dressed for success. <laughs> what about you, Dad? Did you skip as well? Uh, I'll go with Crowder. It's really? the face guy, that Oh, wait, never the mind. For uh, Call of Duty. Oh, never mind. Uh, uh, okay, fine. Let me go with Silent. Oh, same as mine, then. All I right. Do, nice uh, I, admit, I do feel a bit sorry for the Atlanta phase that a lot of people might be avoiding them because, again, kind of don't want to support anything having to no, do with it. Have you ever seen an MLG video, that Jova? No. Okay, it's it, they're you know kind of YouTube poops, but they parody the excessive nature of you know multiplayer shooters. And one particular thing is taking the piece out of Face Clan as being a bunch of elitists, uh, you know, who pretends to be the super best uh, they ever they ever been, you know, and an online multiplayer, but they're just a bunch of pompous dicks. So, oh, they're that. So, 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 so sports athletes. You, but they have been before the, the rise of esports, however. Anyway, last category, speaking of esports, best esports events. Surprisingly enough, Evo is not in these. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have uh, the 2021 League of Legends World Championship, the International 2021, PLG Major Stockholm 2021, PUBG Mobile Global Championship 2020, and Valorant Champions, Champions Tour Stage 2 Masters. I just want Gotta to be honest, uh, 2021. Same, basically. It seems the most safer to me. But I'll do yeah. that. All right, then. And that concludes all the, the voting. Again, better than last year, but still not completely great. The most hindered by two things. The fact that not many new games were released. All of them were just re-releases. And the fact that once again, the, the nominations are clearly, you know, unbalanced in favor of some games rather than other. Again, nothing against it this much, but that loop is nominated way too much for what it's worth, if you ask me. Um, They're really trying to make but, death loop happen, I see. Um, now, for, for a quick last thing, any potential predictions for the trailers? 
Dodger, since I guess he'll be the quickest in saying that. So, the co- one of the guys at NetherRealm did seem to tease something from Mortal Kombat. Uh, yeah. For- or um, yeah, I, I don't whether it's Mortal Kombat or Injustice or, or that potential Marvel game that we keep. You have to remember, MK11 was announced at the Game Awards of 2019, yes. so yeah, it's entirely possible. Well, sorry, yeah. sorry, the Game Awards of 2018. Yeah, bad. Uh, due to unfortunate circumstances that. We got revealed today with Jeff Keighley with Act the Game Awards take right. not taking sides about Activision. Something tells me that Activision is going to have an announcement to wait, share. Wait, 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 wait. They got paid. Uh, you know, it's, it's because of this. Like one of the Activi- guys that hire us at Activision is, is, is part of the board for the Game Awards. Oh, goody. So... Why do you think we kept seeing Call of Duty? Money. That being yeah. that being said, that being said, it is going to be hilarious to see Activision come out in their big ass clown shoes, trying to you know not come off like the devils after. Oh my everything. god! Could you imagine if they show off Wampa League and be like, "See guys, see, 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 we're good, we're good." No, it's like just no. Look, look, look. As much as I love Crash. That ain't gonna make me overlook what is going on there. Oh god, can you imagine that they have old Bobby Kotick come on stage? To All right, Jova. And, uh, what? Jova, I, I will promise you if he does appear on stage, I will leave the call until he disappears. You know what? I can't blame you, but still, wow. Anyway, aside from that, Danger, do you have any other special? Speculation. I feel like we're going to see a trailer for Breath of the Wild 2. Probably. So, since it's coming out next year, and they feel like they they, they have to show something. I feel- and I feel like we're going to have to see something Sonic-related. Whether it's Sonic Origins, which they said that we're getting more information later in the year. <laughs> here, back in May, and we're in December right now. Or it's like, I don't know, maybe something on Prime, the TV show. Or maybe or, a trailer or, for the new movie. Maybe. Who who knows? I I yeah, I feel like something has to happen. I predict Besides that, I Jeff seems to be hyping up this award ceremony more than he usually does. So we're in for something good. I we'll predict see. that there will not be any new Smash announcements made at it. Uh <laughs> Now we can finally enjoy the Game Awards in peace. Deads, deads, deads. Smash arguably helped salvage last year's Game Awards from being... Because it was the first thing show. It, it really was. Oh, that said, though, do you think we'll see something new from Kojima, maybe, at this Game Awards? Geoff did put a tweet that mentioned that they're going to show a game that has been in the world for two and a half years, which would kind of match Kojima's production. Maybe we'll so, see more we'll of see. Square Enix's newest bout of Chaos, Chaos, Chaos too there. Mm. Ooh, I, I actually, I have a special prediction. What? I feel like we're going to spend more time making this about celebrities. No. Nah. You know what, nah, to I give Kaylee even... credit, I don't think they've stooped to that level at the Game Awards. No, nah, as... look, a- after that, I like Fast and Furious thing. <laughs> well, like, hey, hey, to be fair, that was still a game they were showing. Game. Wait, yeah, I, game I know, I know. It, wait, that wait, was wait. the last Okay, wait, wait, wait. Remind was me. Like, oh. Was that last year that it was announced? No, two years ago. Ah, 2019. You know it, what? W- it was like the thing that they they announced right before Game of the Year. Okay, okay, okay. 2019's Game Awards show was not bad. It just wasn't as good as 2017 and 2018 by quite a margin. But it was Also, still... apparently there were some behind-the-scenes things that got changed at the last minute. That's why Jeff wasn't hyping up the show. That would explain why Fast and Furious Crossroads of all things was the finale that year, because don't get me wrong, um... Fast and Furious is cool, but a license tie... Well, okay, and you know, yes, yes, Vin Diesel has specifically made a games company just so that he can have video games that you know don't suck. Shame Crossroads was absolute garbage, but that is neither here nor there. Anyway, do we have any predictions? Other predictions, Jova? Um, hmm. 
Maybe we'll see more Bayonetta free just to make up for lost times. All right. As for me, um, I do agree with what Judge said about MK potentially whatever next to uh, Never Am Studios is doing. Um, however, I also believe they're going to show trailers for both the second Sony movie and the pre- the first premiere trailer of the Super Mario Illumination movie, like I mentioned in our Mario talk. Uh, the time seems to be right for both of them. So we'll have to see if Geoff has actually managed to snuck in exclusivity deals to, to have the world premiere. Um, I also believe we'll see the something titled Chrono Cross as the new media shield leak and other recent developments suggest that Square is doing something to that. And one one at least one of these three trailer trailer premiere for um Fantasy Seven Remake Part Two, trailer premiere for the next King of Mars game, or a new trailer for Final Fantasy Sixteen. What at least one of these three. The other than that, Kako will probably have something, maybe the DLC showing the DLC for Resident Evil Eight, since they've been promised since E three and we haven't seen anything yet. Maybe yeah. something at new le- Ace Attorney was because they've surprisingly really been getting well, more faithful in that series I'd, lately. Or or maybe or maybe something more about their new IP, the one with the astronaut uh, that has been also a long time coming oh, as well. God, it has man, been de- that was it has thing. been delayed recently, complete with a little girl with a message saying sorry. Um, oh. But I wonder if we'll see actually a new trailer for that. I or believe... maybe Capcom might show off Street Fighter Six. <laughs> okay, probably we will showcase one fighting game of any kind. Maybe we'll hey, have to see. What about Darkstalkers if... Four? What about Darkstalkers Four? The the <laughs> the actual Capcom link where we see suggests that they're doing something uh, Power Stone related instead. The we'll important see. fighting game. But series. imagine, what if they actually did Dino Crisis 4? But Dej, Dej, people don't care about 3D arena fighters. Um... Me, me and Armspan get fucked. <laughs> oh, 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 maybe we'll see a trailer for Arms 2 at this show. No, unfortunately. I no. wish, no. I think Nintendo will showcase something, either something about the Breath of the Wild, something about one of these three. One trailer for Splatoon 3, one trailer for Breath of the Wild sequels, or finally a new premiere trailer for Metroid Prime 4. So why you doubtful um, arms too, Dej? I, I feel like they wouldn't show it at the Game Awards, but also I think that the I think the arms team is actually doing uh, uh Splatoon 3, right? No, 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 no. The no. arms team is the Mario Kart team. Uh, okay. The well, Splatoon maybe... team is the Animal Crossing. Yeah, that's a good one. Maybe we Maybe we could see Mario Kart 9, finally. We'll see. Who oh, no. we'll, knows? I, I do believe that overall, maybe we'll also see some kind of like minor announcement, like say, oh, these new characters are being the first DLC for uh, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, or oh, these new, these other characters were also included at launch with Multiversus. Which, on that note, um, we do know that... Uh, the studios that is doing the Harry Potter RPG game um, is, seems to have actually a trailer ready, but they're actually saying that they're waiting for Warner Bros.'s approval, which seems to suggest that Warner Bros. wants to drop it, but they're afraid of a backlash due to the events regarding J.K. Rowling recently. <laughs> so we'll have, to, we'll have to see. Well, recently is a big as war. It happens more than a year ago. But... Um, mm. Uh, so we might see that, we might not, and on that note, we might see Harry Potter stuff in multiverses, or we might not. Um, we'll have to see how it and goes on. I get the idea we will have at least a couple of interesting surprises announced at the game boards. That's also one of the major reasons I wanted to say this video to make this video also to say that yes, I'm confident we will see something important being announced at the game awards for the future, like how. How much and in what quantity? Obviously unknown, but we will see. Um, see, see you eventually for the main event when the others will commentate on it. See, see ya. ya.